Silvio, and this is part two of Do It Yourself Hot Wire Styrofoam Cutter. What I am building here certainly cannot be compared to the building of next generation of spaceships for Mars Expedition, where everything has to be perfect and the plans and distraction must be carried out to the letter. I am simply showing you how to finish a project with what you have on hand. So now, more than ever, you must show adaptability. You may want a different size for your styrofoam cutter, or you may not find the exact same type of screws or aluminum extrusions I am using, but it doesn't matter, because only certain main key points have to be respected then you have the liberty to modify the design to your preferences or raw materials at your disposal. But don't worry, I will add to the last part of this mini-series a detailed document with all the materials I use and plenty of links. It's time to get to work. Hi guys, welcome to the second part of this mini-series. I ended my previous video by showing you how to cut the aluminum extrusions that will be needed to create the side guide for my uh, styrofoam cutter. There. A very simple and easy process, so I thought I didn't want to bore you more than usual, so I finished some more cuttings by myself. More precisely, I refined the length of this piece of aluminum that was uh, protruding way over the total of the wood plus the two guides there. I needed it to be precisely the same width of the wood plus the two guides, so uh, 12 inches or 30 centimeters for the wood plus 20 mil plus 20 mil, 34 centimeters or 340 mils. And this is precisely the width of this piece of uh, aluminum that will be used as a stopper for the uh, guides. Uh, so next, I also cut another two pieces of uh, aluminum uh, extrusions there that I will use to create the main support, the main 90 degree supports for the uh, nichrome uh, wire. And I will explain something more about it in just some minutes. Now, what I need to do, I need to create the wood support for the guides. So two supports, one for, for each side. Then I will need to screw the um, bo both the uh, guides to the wood without having any screws protruding fro from the upper side of the extrusion otherwise the system will uh, not work at all and I will explain how to do it. So let's start then I will add uh, some more things. I will need a uh, support wood so I will use uh, this support wood, this plank of wood. <laughs> it is written here 35 mils uh, by 95 mils by 1000 mils so uh, 1000 mils by 95 by 35 that is supposed to be the thickness of uh, this uh, plank of wood or 39 inches in length by uh, 3.7 inches in width by 1.4 inches in thickness never believe what is written on the, uh, some stickers uh, fro from the uh, seller, from the merchant, because in fact uh, the thickness of this kind of planks is never what it's supposed to be. So let me just show you that this is uh, this is in inches. So this is 1.3 inches, not 1.4 inches, or it is uh, just uh, 33 mils. Let's see. No, too much. I've 
okay that is 33 uh, millimeters so never believe what is written on there you may have uh, <laughs> uh, some uh, clue about the uh, thickness about uh, each dimension but generally uh, the wrong dimension is the uh, thickness because uh, everything else has the right dimension let's uh, measure it let's measure it so uh, a thousand mil so a meter so 39 inches let's measure it precisely 100 centimeters you can see there 100 centimeters then from the other side it is supposed to be 95 uh, mils, 9.5 inch uh, centimeters or uh, 3.7 inches and we have that dimension now each guide I, I remember you that each guide has a length of uh, 60 centimeters there a little less than 60 centimeters but let's suppose 60 centimeters so I will need to cut a length of 60 centimeters first thing I will try to remove these stickers because I ate stickers on my uh, wood let's try to remove it without letting any piece of stickers on the wood so remove it there then I must uh, choose uh, the right uh, the right side let's analyze the wood here I have some little uh, some little scratch in there so let's see where I have the best chance to get a good 60 centimeters and just remember that this will not be visible because it will be under the main uh, table under the main surface so it won't be uh, visible 60 there 60 there okay from the other side I will be there in plain let's imagine I will use these 60 centimeters so um, even here 60 centimeters is correct so let me show you how I will proceed I need to cut it so I will use my jigsaw <laughs> it's always a problem with the jigsaw because you are finding not to go perfectly straight let's try to avoid this so let me first uh, measure uh, 60 centimeters there let me just mark there 60 centimeters yeah there 60 centimeters then 60 centimeters right there 60 centimeters now I know where I have to cut but if I cut directly the wood I risk to have some chip some splinter so always with wood with any type of wood use some tape I will use the same tape you have seen me using for my uh, Christmas village the sticker one not the first version of the tape I use it so I will add it in proximity of the 60 centimeters I need to cut there like that then I will measure again 60 centimeters this time on top of the tape but you can see through it that it is there 60 centimeters now 60 centimeters there my square and so 60 centimeters will be I continue from this side too because I need to have a starting point even from the side so there 60 centimeters marked there I will fix the this plank there I will fix it to the main table let me just bring to the scene some more bigger uh, clamps quick release clamps there and I will clamp it there I'm using this side of the table because I am 
right handed and I need to cut and <laughs> to support the piece that will uh, uh, follow down. If you are left handed you will use the other side of the table obviously. Uh, dump remark I know but <laughs> I needed to do it. So let me just use another clamp there. Now I think it is fixed there. Then I will bring my jigsaw. I will test it now without the blade there. So let me just see if it works. Yes, sorry for the noise. Now imagine that the blade, the saw, will be there, positioned there. I will need to have a perfect straight cut there and not ruining <laughs> the 90 degrees of the plank there. So I will add the blade to my uh, jigsaw there. I will use this uh, uh, clean cut or maybe the other one that is, uh, yes, for wood, this is for wood too. Okay, I will release there, sorry, for the, everything, I am there, not easy to do, especially with a camera there, so I will add the, yeah, the blade there, voila, I will test it. Yes, the jigsaw is working. Then I need to verify where the blade will be. I don't know if you can see it, the blade is positioned there, precisely where it should start. But I'll risk to go everywhere when cutting it. I'll need some sort of a guide. I will use another piece of wood there at 90 degrees to guide my cutting. So let's bring to the scene another piece of wood there. Then I will adjust it some way. I don't know if I prefer to go this side. Yes, applying the force towards uh, the left. Yes, I will go this side. So let me just start with this other clamp there. I don't apply too much, um, I don't straighten it too much because I need to refine the position. Then I will use this other there. Or I can use another big one, but if I can, I will use this little one there. There. Let's verify that it is at 90 degrees. A little more towards the exterior. So if you want, you can also measure the distance between the center of the blade. There, the center of the blade is three point. Let me adjust a little bit the camera there. You can also measure the, di the distance between the blade there and the exterior part there. It is a three point. Uh, I don't need to be precise at the mills, 3.3 3, uh, centimeters. So I can also measure 3.3 centimeters. Let's see there if I have 3.3 .3 centimeters. There. Yeah, 3.3 .3 centimeters. Then I can use this to be perfectly at the 90 degrees there now I think it is good let's start sorry for the noise
there done quick noisy I know but done okay let's remove it you may have the impression that this is not 90 degrees simply because the tape wasn't placed at 90 degrees with everything else let's just remove some of the tape there I know it has been quick too quick maybe now let's just remove the tape I have uh, no chip I have no splinter at all okay uh, good let's have it there let's check it okay 90 degrees okay now let me just do the same thing with the other one let me check if uh, 60 centimeters there okay 60 centimeters there good 60 centimeters now I will use let me just mark it for let me just use there like this I know that this will be <laughs> the part I will use as 60 centimeters now second piece of wood Now, I have my two guides there, 60 centimeters each. I will need to mark them. So let me just remove, let me put it on off there. Okay. For now, I won't be using the jigsaw. So for my security, I will remove the blade there blade removed now just make some space there then i will do some more now let's start with this one i will need to place it to place the guide there so I will have the guide there I just rem let me just remember you that this is 20 mil so I will need to mark there 20 mil then 10 mils the exact uh, half of it then I will mark the points where I will need to uh, drill the holes for the screws let's do some quick math this is 660 centimeters so the length the total length there will be 600 mils now let's imagine I will place the first screw from each side there one there and one there at 20 mils from the border the total is 40 mils 600 sorry for my bad right and writing minus 40 that's 560 millimeters 560 millimeters divided by 2 equals 280 
mils. From this point, 280 mils, the mid there. 280. Do I need some more screw? Yes, I will need. Let's divide another time by 2. This is 140 mils. 140 mils from this point, the mid there. One there and one there. So it is perfectly symmetrical with one, two, three, four, five screws. I will need five screws. I will need five holes. I will need five times to countersink the holes and I will explain some more in just a few seconds. So a total of 10 screws to screw it to screw the guide, the aluminum extrusion, the aluminum guide to the wood. Let me just explain to you how it works. Obviously I will not place it there and drill some holes into the aluminum because the guide will not work with all the uh, screws extruding from the uh, bottom of uh, the hole there. So I will need to make some holes in the wood, have the screws from this side up here, so the head of the screw there on bottom, then the screw protruding here, but not 20 centimeters, not 14 inches or so. The exact same depth of the hole there. Inside I have 6 millimeters. I have 6 millimeters from the bottom of the hole, from the bottom of uh, this um, uh, um, hole, this squared hole there and the border, the top border of the extrusion. So I will need the screw to protrude maximum 6 millimeters from this side. 6 millimeters. So it's not <laughs> simple to have some screw with the exact uh, dimension, with the exact length you will need. So you will need to adapt. You will need to find the um, the, the screw that is um, a maximum near to the length you need, to the dimension you need, then you will need to cut each screw, to cut each of the 10 screws. Let's start by marking here. It will be clear in some uh, minutes. Let me just fix again the wood to the ta table because I need to be precise with the marking. One there and one there. Now let's take my Woolcraft uh, square there. Impossible to do it uh, with, uh, with that. Let me just decide how to do it in some other ways. I can't have it fixed because the square is much longer than what I need. Let me just see if I can fix it. No, I will not fix it to the wood. Now, let's hope not to do some errors. There, I have the square that is well suited for my work. I have here 1 cm, 10 mm and then 20 mm. I will slide it there with my pencil. And I will mark at 2 cm. And I will mark the same at 1 cm in plain middle of the in plain middle of the <coughs> I have a hole there, sorry in the middle of the extrusion
there now I can continue there I have some reference there so I can continue a little bit there now the middle there and the middle there okay I will uh, drill the holes in the middle line onto the middle line not the end or uh, the border so let's check if it is at uh, one centimeters at uh, 10 mils yes it's good so we said two centimeters 20 millimeters from this point there first hole there then 20 centimeters from uh, 20 centimeters sorry 20 mils from this side there then each 14 centimeters one there then 28 centimeters this will be the middle then 14 and 28 then 14 then we'll have the 28 there one two three four five screw there 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 and there let me just start there okay sorry done I will bring to the scene my drill there the counter sinker then then some drill bit first the thinner one there so as always let me just start with the smallest tool possible no bigger I will drill even through the wood there to the table so I will need some support there I will use this as support otherwise I will damage the table down below uh, yeah one here one there it's useful <laughs> that I have st I still have uh, some of the styrofoam I used for my Christmas village there there okay let's start <laughs> wood drill bit the uh, screws will be uh, M5 so I will have a hole um, having a diameter of 6 millimeters so a millimeters wider than the um, than the screws diameter Okay, let me check with the screws. There, going, 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 and going through. Okay, now let's check from the other side 
and you will see that I have some chip, some splint there, some little splint, some little chip splinter there. Not very important right now. Now I will need to countersink the holes of obviously, but just observe, just uh, look at the at the screw there. Um, it's not a conical head there. With the uh, uh, the hood screw, I have a cone head, a conical head. This is not a conical head. So I will need to adapt it with the countersinking in order to uh, to have the head of the screw completely beneath the surface of the wood, step by step. Then I will measure uh, the length I will need precisely before cutting the uh, all the screws. I forgot to tell you something how it works with the screw and the extrusions. Uh, let me just, obviously without a nut it won't work. Now I will need some nuts, some M5 T-slot nuts that will be slid in, into the hole there. There. Then the screw can use the T nuts, T nut, sorry, there. And the screw is there, is fixed and you can move anywhere. So once the hole is done, I will have the screw protruding from the down below and I will screw it there, this way. Hope you are seeing it correctly. So I will use it this way in order to screw the guide to the wood there. But the screw there is way too long. So I will need to cut it after the head is beneath the surface there. Let me just do it from this side, from the other side, okay? So uh, I will need to cut the screw. Uh, the T-nuts, we have different type of T-nuts. This one is suited, the profile there is suited for this kind of uh, uh, extrusion there. This one I used, I find it uh, uh, online and it was associated with this kind of uh, uh, T-nut. Normally, usually, uh, those are the kinds of T-nuts that will be used in, um, in uh, T-slot uh, uh, extrusions there. But if you observe the profile there, it is larger, it is wider, than this one. Those are standards. Every every uh, T-slot extrusion in the world use this kind this kind of t nuts But this particular extrusion <laughs> will only be found in uh, Europe with this profile. There use this kind of uh, of t uh, nuts. There, not this one. It won't fit inside the hole. And these uh, t nuts there have also has also. Uh, a small ball bearing there with uh, with um, a spring beneath it. You can see that if I apply some uh, force there it tends to get down so it has a spring inside and will help sliding it. But don't worry you will use this kind of uh, T-nuts with your um, t 2020 T-slot or even some uh, thinner uh, T-nuts that it I will add in the uh, links with the last part of this series. So forget the standard one for now because I need to work with this T nut there. So I've explained to you the uh, principle of, uh, um, of the screwing I will use. Now uh, let me just uh, countersink the holes there. I will use countersinking from this side there 
because I've already uh, chipped it now let's have just one of it there no I need to fix both sides sorry there and there okay bring once again the countersink there and I will proceed step by step little by little I will start then I will check if it's enough to hide and the to to hide the head beneath the surface I don't think so you see that I still have the head there so let's continue with the countersinking okay let's check if it's enough not really not really I still have some depth to drill now let's check once again a little more normally it's quicker with the uh, with connected uh, screws but this one isn't connected one more time now is under well under yes uh, i am just uh, sticking <laughs> against the border of the hole but the, uh, the the screw head is under the surface yes let me just be sure okay. let me just be sure yeah okay now what i need to do before getting ahead with all the holes i need to mark there i need to mark where the screw is protruding from the wood let me mark the screw there right there let me check if it is visible yes now let me just measure it it is 31 mils okay you can see it 31 mils so two millimeters less than the thickness of the of the wood there because i remember you it was 33 mils so it means that the head is two mils thick there now just remember the depth of the hole there six millimeters 31 plus six equal 37 mils 31 i just write it down for me plus six equals 37 mils this is the length i will need to cut now let me just mark here 37 mils thirty maximum 37 mils even if you have 36 it will be good but maximum 37 mils then i'm going a little more than 37 because i have a big cutting tool so i will need it to be there 
Now, let me just mount something there. I need to cut it, so I will need this one. I can't cut it right there because I'm not the right angle there. I will need to cut it this angle with this angle here. So I will need to cut it this angle. I will need to fix there. I will need to fix it there. Now it is fixed there. I will get in place the screw there. All right, hope you can see it. I will need to cut there. Now, let me just do some silly thing. Let me just there. Let me just bring some water to the scene. This is aluminium, so we don't. I don't risk anything uh, with hot screw inside the water melting something. Now. I will uh, get my my rotary tool there just my rotary tool there <laughs> Okay, now it will be uh, very hot, the screw will be very hot because friction between metals tends to it, so I will place it in some cold water, just some seconds there, okay, now, okay, uh, very quickly done, so I need to file a little bit. <laughs> Let me just check if the screw is working there. On the other side. Okay. Good. The screw is working. So let me just show you how I will proceed now. Let me just insert the screw in the hole there. Okay, now the first guide there. Let me just insert one tease nut there from this side there. I need it there. Okay, then uh, once I have all them there. All of them there, I will slide it there, then I will tighten the screw there. Right there, okay, I am doing it very quickly now, there, and here it is fixed of course. Let me tighten a little more. 
Okay. And the guide will be fixed there. Now I am just the pivot there because I need all the other holes. Then the guide will be fixed where it needs to be fixed and it will assume the correct position towards the border of it. Okay, uh, I will show you the final process there. Let me just finish with all the holes very quickly. So I will uh, maybe uh, fast forward everything because now I need to go uh, to make all the holes. Then I will do the same thing for the uh, second uh, wood uh, support. So I will have to cut all the screws, all the 10 screws, then I will have to, um, to uh, countersink every holes there, from the other side obviously, every holes there, then I will show you how to screw it uh, from the finish. So now uh, I don't think you are interested in seeing me doing all the process over again, so uh, I will have a recap, a final recap. I will uh, stop the <laughs> filming now and I will get to you once I've done uh, both the, um, the supports for the uh, guides. See you in 24 hours, <laughs> maybe, no, I'm joking, in some minutes, sorry. Okay, so guys, here I am, 40, 45 minutes later, the two uh, wood supports are complete. You can see that I've added the T-nuts, uh, the 10 T-nuts, and I also added, of course, the 10 uh, screws down there. This was the first one, and this is the second one right there. Okay, all done, all in place. Now, let's fix the, uh, let's fix the guides where they need to be. Now let's bring the guides there one by one there this one from this side okay now this one from this side I need to screw it a little bit there and this one finally the last one uh, there too okay now to the border everything to the border there and let's screw the screws <laughs> All right, and one is done there. Second one. <coughs> and there, okay. But the guides are done. Let me just show you how it will be. Here we go. Okay, one here and one there. Okay, I won't screw uh, the <coughs> two uh, supports woods to the main base right now because uh, I still need to do some work on the main base. Let's just uh, sh see if everything is smooth. Yes, the uh, two uh, guides there are under uh, one between one and two millimeters under beneath the border here, so the styrofoam will not stack against the guides. It's starting uh, to take some form. I will have here some space, but not enough yet for all the electricals down there. <coughs> 
now before continuing with something else let's just uh, show you for the first time how this will work once everything will be <laughs> screwed together okay the guide there i need a mean to <coughs> guide this stopper into the grooves um, into the grooves into the holes of the uh, extrusion there so the handles i have one and two handles here one and two then i have some corner there because if you want to screw <coughs> this and have an effective uh, if you want to connect sorry this uh, shorter uh, piece of uh, uh, extrusion there with the two guide lateral guides you need this uh, corner here otherwise you won't be able you would need to uh, uh, make a hole in the guide there in the in this piece there and i don't like it so i will use this little uh, corner there you can see that uh, i have uh, uh, some problems it's, of course i have uh, some parts that uh, will need to guide the corner inside the hole inside the groove there but is suited uh, for uh, joining two pieces having 90 degrees so each uh, each one will be well guided with uh, these two little uh, mounting there inside the groove inside the hole so i will need it like that so it will have i will have to uh, file to send uh, these uh, two uh, pieces of uh, uh, aluminium because this is aluminium protruding from the base there uh, in order to have it completely uh, connected with the uh, co completed um, uh, in contact with the, the uh, extrusion so i will need to do file and done sorry for the noise and all the dust i've made okay now uh, let me just bring some more screw to the scene let me bring the shorter one i will need two of these let me just start with this side connected here i will need of course two more uh, t nuts there one here okay then i will need a washer simply because the when i will put the screw there without the washer this depth this length will be over six mil over the depth of the hole of the groove there so i will have problem now i don't want to complicate myself so i will do this all right there i will Tighten it in the right position there. Exactly towards the border or less. Okay, like this. Now right there. I'll do the same thing from the other side. <laughs> there in position now i'm doing it very quickly but i will need to adjust it there i will need to adjust this position too now simply because the um, the two support the two wood support aren't already screwed uh, onto the base into the base i have some problem of dimensioning there okay now this will slide all along there i need a way to stop to stop the stopper now i will use these handles here 
let's just use them as they are let me just insert two more t-nuts there one here and one there good now let's bring these there let me show you that I will immediately have a problem there there it is screwed but <laughs> screw down yes but uh, it isn't fixed there it moves now let me just add uh, uh, an older friend of mine pardon me to the scene I will insert this little piece of aluminium pipe and it is the same I've used it for my uh, street lamps for in my um, uh, Christmas village this year and I cut it in order to have six or seven mils getting uh, protruding from the uh, from the pipe I've lost my no here it is here we go let's just measure it it is six and a half mils six and a half mils then I will use why uh, six and a half mils this time because I also have the thickness of the an angle there so even if I am oops I have slide it badly sorry I tend to forget that this isn't screwed together Ooh la la pardon me now uh, because I was saying I have also the thickness of the angle there the 90 degrees um, angle there so I will add mm, between 2 and 3 mils more so even if I don't have 3.6 mil but 3.6 mil but 3.7 mils it will shoot anywhere and this time I will screw it down there now let me just do the same thing with this other handle another piece of pipe there done I simply need to have it perfectly uh, where I want it I tighten a little bit and it is well fixed this time with no problems <laughs> now you must adapt I know I told you if you don't have the pipe just use some washers I have here the exact same length of washers there those are a little too big for the for the purpose because they will stuck I don't know no these th they aren't good enough but uh, because they are uh, they have a too big diameter but if you don't have the pipe you could replace the pipe with some washers having the same uh, length of the pipe here so you must adapt sorry I don't have right now the right uh, washers but uh, you are able <laughs> from now on to adapt so just adapt to everything you have uh, you have uh, another uh, type of pipe larger yes you, you can use it but it has to be mm, narrower than the dimension of uh, the hole you have here than this width there otherwise it won't work now I right there those handles are perfect just see this one it causes some problems with the uh, with the uh, styrofoam if it gets too closer but if I go up and then rotate it there it still screw down this the same time I pull up then rotate 
you see the screw there doesn't move but the handle move so I have rotated them and 360 degree I don't know just you just need to pull up and rotate then click and they are done and this system is perfect no problem at all when I need to replace the stopper I just need to slide it all along the um, all along the guide there where I want it to be but uh, I measure 20 centimeters here 20 centimeters there then I simply need to screw it down perfectly uh, at 90 degrees there and then if I have problems I can move the handles there and it is <laughs> it is well tightened to do everything so this system is way more effective than the one I show you last time with uh, no way to get it where I want but now with this new system all will be perfect okay for my standards perfection is something that I will never achieve but let me just use this term please so now I've shown you everything I will need to remove uh, the stopper there because uh, for now I won't be using it but now we have an idea where I want to go simply remove it slide it all along the um, the groove the holes the square holes and I can remove the guide there and it is uh, very well uh, suited for this design I have here this new design I have here now I will need to proceed let me just yes let's do uh, some more things uh, let me bring to the scene some other extrusions those one okay I will use them like that in order to have as I told you before the 90 degree support for the uh, nichrom wire there okay intentionally I haven't gone towards the limit towards the border I still have some space but just remember that this will go 20 mils inside so I will have also another 20 mils and I have some space here in the front uh, almost the same um, length of uh, cutting space I had with my uh, previous uh, model of styrofoam cutter let me just yeah there it's like if I will cut from here to there so I will have a cutting length of uh, 47 centimeters and uh, this will be good uh, I've left uh, this uh, uh, space here this length here if I want to cut something uh, towards this di direction and not always toward this other direction or if I want to place a support there in order to cut some circular piece of uh, uh, styrofoam I will not be able to do it if I am uh, to uh, to near to the border there so I will have uh, some support there in order to have a tool to cut uh, a rounded piece of styrofoam I will show you in the next weeks so how do I obtain the uh, also I will have uh, an, uh, a thickness of uh, um, of cutting uh, way uh, more elevated from the previous version I will have around 20 or 22 centimeters of uh, uh, 8 uh, cutable uh, the other version I have no more than 13-14 centimeters so much higher dimension of cutting ability now how do I fix it together just remember I will show you uh, very quickly because I will need to do some other works on these two pieces of uh, mm, aluminum extrusion before getting it completed because I will need to have uh, one of the main uh, wires getting through the, uh, the middle hole there 
in order to bring the electricity, the other ele the electricity to the um, uh, to the nichrome that will be around there, going towards the base of the um, of the surface there. So I will need uh, to do some more uh, work on uh, on the two. Uh, piece of uh, aluminum but right now I will show you how to connect them properly uh, so I will have uh, to have uh, some holes getting from here and also there but it's uh, too early let's proceed those two <laughs> may have already uh, guessed it I will use these 90 degree uh, brackets in order to fix uh, the two um, the two piece of uh, um, aluminum uh, extrusion at 19 degrees. I will use uh, some more uh, screw there. I will use one, two, three, four, five screw, and uh, I will also use uh, some more uh, T nuts there. So let me just show you, but it's very easy to understand right now that you have understood sorry for the joke uh, the um, the mechanics of everything And five there you can see that <laughs> it is perfectly stable perfectly at 90 degrees yes perfectly there and there 90 degrees even from this side 90 degrees there yes and perfectly in line no this one is not there now okay I simply need to move it a little towards the back anyway this will not be in the final time you see me doing that there Now, there, stable, 90 degrees, no problem at all. I will simply need to there. This isn't perfectly stable right now. Okay. <coughs> I just need some adjustments. I need to have the same eight, but I will adjust it later. Okay, I will measure it later. This is the uh, how I um, choose this solution because I will need once everything is uh, uh, screwed with to, um, all the woods will be screwed together. I will then have the ability to move it up down a little bit in order to 
I've adjusted to perfectly be uh, at 90 degrees having the same height from the point here to the uh, bottom of uh, the support there I will measure it once this will be fixed because right now it isn't fixed at all but this is how it will be uh, done so uh, now you have seen that uh, I have uh, some uh, uh, some problems with the with the support here I will have to do two things first I will need to cut some uh, uh, some insert there I will need to cut uh, an insert there uh, a half a square there uh, in order to have uh, this part of uh, this here uh, uh, aligned with the border there then I will so uh, have to uh, cut another piece of uh, wood shaped uh, there it will be placed there uh, not uh, a rectangular um, not having a rectangular form I will place it there with the support connected there but I will so have we we'll need to have some space to pivot it in order to have some uh, angle cuts done uh, into the styrofoam so I will need to design the back here I will have uh, some design done for next time and uh, I will cut it uh, with you next time because I think I'm well over the time of this video and then I will uh, show you how I will proceed uh, with everything else uh, not uh, too much to say this time I hope you have enjoyed it and uh, I also hope that uh, you start uh, viewing my, uh, my uh, project my you start um, seeing where I want to go that's the term I was searching you are uh, seeing where I want to go with all the design this is a mini series so next time I will mm, probably complete everything then I will do the wiring uh, next uh, next uh, time again so maybe two or maximum three more uh, parts uh, of this mini uh, series and it will all be done but don't count too much on it I don't know so for now let's uh, stop here uh, and next time I will start by showing you the design I will need to cut into the wood see you for the outro bye once again you got the proof that you don't need to be scared of new projects of new adventures simply because you might think that they are too complicated to achieve or beyond your capabilities stop worrying about the who project right from the beginning it will only make you panic and fall into despair you simply need an easy starting point then step after step you will add brick after brick until your wall is done. Please don't forget to subscribe, comment and give thumbs up. Thank you for watching, thank you for bearing my absolutely awful English and if you wish, see you next time.